I crushed my ex-wife's hopes after she cheated on me and ruined my name. A bit of background, I'm 36 now. My ex-wife is 34, but this happened when we was in college. So Rebecca and I were college sweethearts. We survived college and all the hardships of life got married in our early 20s. I was 25, she was 23. And ever since we got married, things have been rocky. I'm not talking about the whole marriage, but situation through situation, it was always something. There were some things that were okay with me and not with her. And then there was things that were okay with her, but not with me. I was in medical and she was an accounting major. Literally, despite being married, she acted like she was a free bird. And she was. It was a good thing, but after a while, there was a bunch of marriage neglect on her side. In 2016, she got an accounting job with my college buddy, James. It paid well, especially for our country. I was extremely happy because, hey, that's a buddy of mine. I knew him from college, and he's giving my wife a job, giving her good money, making her good cash cash. Oh, yes, this is a good situation. Literally, every time she came home, she started complaining about the job, about work, about the home, literally everything that was in place. She said she didn't like where we lived. She had a problem with almost every single thing that I did. She said that she didn't like the food that she used to love. I was cooking for her all through college, but now she hates every meal that I give her. It got to the point where our fights intensified. She started calling me names and I started calling her names back. I didn't understand why she was doing this, but I was like, baby, let's talk because we used to have open communication, but now it seems like she's so guarded. A drastic turn happened in the three month period where I was really looking for a job in the medical industry. I ended up having to go out of the country and a drastic thing happened. Her and James was hanging out. It was with our set of mutual friends and they had relied back to me. Hey, this is kind of weird how they acting. I immediately confronted both of them because like, well, hey man, what, what you got going on with my wife? They had both said it was a sudden plan and I was out of town. So it was just something that happened. Thinking about now, they might have planned it beforehand, but I'm, I'm not sure. of. In 2017, my marriage blew up. At this point, I was sure there was something going on because my bedroom was dead. Literally at this time, I was increasingly paranoid. And when I tried to conversate with her about it, she would just dismiss me or say that I was acting crazy. But this is my thought process, right? If your literal favorite person in the world starts acting completely different and you acknowledge it and then they look at you like you're crazy, I, like something is going on. Now, I'm going to be honest. At this point, I was still young and dumb. I had constantly yelled at her to tell me what was going on because something was different and it seemed like my normal talking was not getting across. At this time, though, we were at our peak financially because all of our debts was paid off. I had found a good job. I was working. Everything was going good. Her money was her money. My money was our money. It was it was a nice relationship, I thought. Because we had so much extra income, my friends and I just started to open up a medical shop, which provide medical services to people in need. One of the friends was Philip. Remember that name because that's going to be super important later. Philip, after we got everything situated, said, hey, bro, we should celebrate at a pub. I was like, yeah, let's do it. When we got there, though, as we was dancing, I look over and I saw somebody that looked just like Rebecca. And I was like, no, nah, that can't be Rebecca. So then I get closer, you know what I'm saying, edge over, dancing hand to hand. There she was, Rebecca and James. So I'm sitting there like, hold on, nah. Well, what's going on? So I text my wife and I'm like, Hey, baby, how you doing? Where you at? Around this time is usually when she's on the way to home. So she texted me and she says, oh, I'm already at home. At this point, I'm like, what? No, you're not. Why, why are you lying to me? And she said, oh, my fault. I'm on the way. And I see her get pale, hurry up and leave out the door. And I'm like, what? When I got home that night, that night, I asked her about James. The look she gave me is if she saw a ghost. Because I promise you, she was not expecting that question. Right when I saw her, that look told me, oh yeah, something definitely up. If you ask your significant other about a friend, they should act normally. But the way she acted was so abnormally, I was like, yeah, something gotta be going on. That night specifically, I snooped her phone. Curiosity got the best of me. I didn't have the password though, but the next day while she was typing it in, I had got it. And that night I went in there. There were thousands upon thousands of messages, talk back and forth, lovey-dovey, all different types of stuff between her and James. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, what, what, what? And then the next day, because I was so emotionally, I stupidly confronted her with no evidence. Man, when I tell you things blew up in my face, they blew up in my face hard. She was saying that I was being loud. She had reported it to the uh, 911 about me being abusive and all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, where is this coming from? Like, yeah, I might yell every now and again, but abusive is wild. Literally, the tension inside of our house could be cut with a butter knife because I could not look at her the same. And she was looking at me like, you know what? 
I'm in love with James. Told me straight up. And I got furious. I was mad. And I did something I shouldn't have did. I threw all of the glasses inside of the kitchen onto the floor. And at that point, she had the evidence she needed to say that I was doing something bad to her inside of the house. And I was like, no, this is my property. This is stuff that I bought. Not, I didn't do anything to her. But because of that, she had all the evidence against me to say that I was abusive inside of the relationship. And I was stuck because she told all of our friend group, James was her savior, and things really started to hurt to me because we had made a vow to each other to say that we will always, no matter what, be there for each other. And if we need something to spice up the relationship or we feel as if we're not being adequate in the relationship, we can talk to each other about that. She broke all of those vows. She, she totally destroyed me. My trust was completely destroyed. I was like, what is happening? Literally for the last two weeks of our marriage, I couldn't even stay inside of our house. And because of the abuse charges, I didn't even get much stuff inside of the divorce. I was ruined. Before our divorce was even finalized, her and James' relationship was public. It was in the open. Everybody saw him as her savior, the guy that came through, and they saw me as the villain, the dude that was always aggressive and doing the bad thing. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute. What really sucks about the situation is we did not have a prenup. And infidelity is not a cause for divorce inside of our country. But you know what is? Abuse. Apparently, up until this point, weeks before, she had filed multiple complaints about me being abusive. Every single time that I got mad and overly aggressive and took something and destroyed it, she took pictures of it. And then she had all of these pictures of stuff that happened while we was on hikes, stuff that happened while we were out. She, she had like all of these evidences and things. And I'm like, whoa, hold up, hold up. I didn't even do this. This, this happened when she fell off the horse. She got half of everything plus some. I ended up having to move in with my sister for a little bit and I was distraught. I didn't know what to do. I had just lost my wife. I lost all of my friends. And one of the dudes that I was working with was very, very good friends with James. And he was like, hey, bro, it is what it is, but I can't work with you no more. And I'm sitting here like, come on. Literally 12 years of relationship, four years of marriage out of the window. And I'm like, what? All of the friendships that I had from college out of the window, the only person that I had was Philip. We were officially divorced during the start of 2018. When I talked to some of my friends about it, they legit said, yeah, she had every right to cheat on you because of how bad you were as a person. And then they blocked me on everything. I legit had to change cities to move somewhere else just to restart my whole life again. Philip had helped me massively in that first start. He helped me get a good paying job, not as good as the one that I had before, but definitely something to get my feet on the ground, helped me get an apartment. And honestly, dating for me was over. Me and my ex-wife had went no contact and I just couldn't trust nobody. I couldn't talk to nobody. But then Philip had introduced me to his cousin, Jamie. And when I tell you Jamie was sent from God, I'm not saying that Philip is God, but like, whoo, my gosh. That's when we get to 2020. My life was doing absolutely amazing, and this is where the revenge started. Due to a global panorama that was going around, our workforce was filled. It was breaking our backs, but it was filling our pockets. Our pharmacy venture turned huge. So I was able to make a good amount of money. I met a friend of mine of whom I got a tip that James and my ex-wife were done. He had cheated on her with a receptionist that was at the job and left her with a kid. I was like, what? But because he didn't sign the birth certificate, she had to raise that kid alone. Rebecca had tried dating, but apparently she was not over me or James. The audacity of that. Part of me was happy with it, but gosh. That just wasn't enough. The revenge that I had in mind was so much more sinister. And what I did next <sighs> may shock you. At this point in time, I really missed her. So I sent in an email to see how she was doing. At this point in time, she said, oh my gosh, I missed you too. We exchanged emails and reconnected. Our first meetup was in 2021 after several years. And when I tell you, she looked like crap. I'm talking about awful. I was like, oh man, I about threw up in my mouth looking at her because it didn't even look like my ex-wife. It looked like an image of somebody that poorly drew my ex-wife. She looked like she was mentally and physically exhausted all the time. Literally looking at her, I knew that life had already got my revenge. Like karma had got her, but I didn't get her yet. So it's my time. Step to the side, karma. She had told me everything about James and reopened the earlier rooms. She let me know that inside of the situation that they were in, James had pursued her and James had made her think, oh, she was too good for me. Because around that time when she was working for James' company, she was making more money than me. She was doing more. So she wanted to have a real man inside of her life. Oh, real man, huh? Literally in that situation, I had got my closure. 
And I, I did feel a little bit better because I'll tell you right now, I'm doing way better than James anyway. But yeah, let's get back to the story. She had said that she was sorry. She wasn't thinking straight when she had did what she did. She was just young, dumb, and trying to have fun. I told her straight up, I will forgive you if you come clean to everybody that's in our old friend group about what had happened in the city. And she did. Literally, she lost a bunch of friends because of that. And a bunch of people reached out saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She said she wanted us to date again. Clear words. And make me raise that a hose James's child. Nah, nah, nah. I told her straight up, I would agree to it. But we would need to date for a little bit, see if we even like each other, and then get married. And after that, I will adopt the child. When I tell you that little guy was adorable, I had taken a liking to him. I went to visit him. Now, here's the kicker inside of the situation. At this point, I was in a deep relationship with Jamie. Jamie was Philip's cousin, and Jamie was actually one of the most amazing people I have met in my life. Every time we would talk, it would be straight. And Jamie even said to me, she's good with an open relationship and trying different things out. So when I told Jamie about the plan originally, she said no. And then I said, have you ever had anybody that tarnished your name, literally ripped everything from you, and then tried to make it up by saying you can help me raise the baby with the guy you cheated on me with? And then Jamie was like, you know what? Maybe we can get her. And I said, I know we can. Me and my ex-wife were living in different cities, so I never moved in with her. But what me and Jamie would do is she would drive me over there, drop me off, and have me talking to her. She gave me different spit games and things to say to make her very, very nice and like really lean towards our relationship even more and more and more. I started doing little gifts, and me and Jamie would make it a game to think about different things to get her for Valentine's Day, Christmas, one week anniversary, two week anniversary, child's anniversary. We did stuff for the child's birthday. I'm talking about everything in between. I became the perfect man for Rebecca, even though it was really me and Jamie doing it. And this is where the revenge gets even harder. Me and Rebecca were having touchy touchy time and Jamie knew about the situation. She was for it, but I had to use kind of steps and condoms, which I wanted to because, hey man, there's no telling where Rebecca have been. So after a year and a half of dating, it was pretty much 2022 August time. It was around Rebecca's birthday, the exact date. And I had took her a couple of weeks before to go ring shopping. We looked for the perfect ring and we found the one that she loved to death. I was like, okay, that's the one you want. Cool, cool, cool. This looks nice. I ended up getting this beautiful venue set up and everything was just right for her birthday. It looked like a wedding venue as when you walk through all of Rebecca's flowers, all of her favorite things. And I I wanted to make sure it was between me and you so the only people that was there was me rebecca and jamie oh jamie was sitting inside of the pew at the front row just like oh chilling we walked by her and we waved and rebecca was super happy because she knew something important something good something great was about to go down as i was looking at rebecca a crowd hat came in from the back room i'm looking her directly in the face and i'm saying hey for these last couple of years, I have been close to you. I have loved you. I have cared about you. And I started to show Rebecca pictures of me and Jamie. Almost every single trip that me and Jamie went on was right behind me on the Jumbotron. She, Rebecca sitting there, face dropped. She's like, what, what, what's, what's happening? What's happening? I hold out the ring. I get on one knee and that's when Jamie walks up and puts her finger in it and says, I do. Rebecca screamed. I'm talking hardcore screaming tears running down her face, snotty nose, not knowing what's going on. She's like, how could you do to this to me? What, what, what is this? What is this? And I said, this is the love of my life, Jamie. And we're getting married right now. All of my friends from this place that knew about the situation came and sat down and watched as I got married right in front of Rebecca. And I said, all of the past instances inside of my life are gone. And the only person that I will love and take care of and extremely cherish is you, Jamie. The vows that we had together were close to the exact same vows that she broke. Rebecca broke. Rebecca took out. And when I tell you, I have never seen somebody just, yeah... It, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Like, I think she ended up having like a small panic attack and going to the hospital. It was pretty bad. Um, uh, she's still in the hospital to this day. Like we, we ended up we ended up other than letting the, the, the county and state take her son. Um, you know, what I'm saying we, we tried to find uh, fucking James. No, couldn't find him. So now now we're just watching him until she get out the hospital. But when she get out the hospital. <laughs> Heartbreak, bro. Heartbreak. I, I really hope she okay, though, because that's, that's just, just.